Greetings hobbyists, this is R Sans of Vool, and in this video we're going to have a look at a problem with scaling in geometry nodes. So I ran into this problem over the weekend when I was effectively trying to sort out this. This is going to be a vent that I can just add to models as and when I choose, but the whole point of this is that I can just increase it in size on the X or on the Y, I can change the height of it if I want to, or whatever, and it will just automatically generate everything that I needed to generate, so it just makes life easier. But there was a problem with this, and that problem was coming about because, well, I actually want this angle, this bit here, to be fixed on all sides. I want it to be the same, and more than that, I don't want it to change because when you've got geometry nodes and you move things around, for example like that, it has a tendency to change the angles with the way you've got to make this. The other thing that could happen is that as I change things around, this side bit here can also change, and I actually want that to be constant. I want to be able to do it whatever I want it to be, but it not change when I change the model around. So this seemed like a bit of annoyance and it's actually not too hard to solve. So we're gonna have a look at the problem, what causes it and how to solve it as an issue. So let's just file new and start a new file. Right, so obviously this is gonna be focusing on geometry nodes. You could do this manually in an easier way, but actually you still have a problem with scaling in Blender. So it's still worth discussing this. So let's just start with our default cube. I'm gonna press new to start a geometry node tree and we're going to want want to get rid of this group input because we don't care about the geometry. So what I'll do is make the beginnings of this vent. I'm not going to make the whole thing. I mean, if you want me to show you how to make the whole thing, then I'm more than happy to. Just say so in the comments. And if you do want this vent, it is going to be up on the Patreon. I just need to finish off and tweak it. So it is coming. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a curve. And what I want is a quadrilateral here, which is going to start as a rectangle. That's pretty much what we want. And then let's connect that so we can see that here. So this was the beginning of my vent and we can control the width to be whatever we want it to be. I'm going to put that as, let's say, five and four, just so it's not the same on both sides and we can sort of see what's going on. But let's move that out of the way for now. And then I wanted to curve the edges as well. So I'm just going to add a fillet curve there and we can set the radius I want to set it as a polygon because I want to have the count. Let's put that to something like 16 so it's nice and smooth. And then we've got our radius. We can change as much as we want. I'm actually going to limit that so that it can't overshoot. Without that, it can cause some problems. So let's just limit that and put that as somewhere like there. We'll do that for now. Anyway, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to fill this curve and we want to extrude it upwards. So at this point, we're going to extrude mesh. And that's going to extrude it up a certain amount and we can change how much it extrudes up or down. Um, oh, there is a slight problem with this because it does some nasty things here. So let's change that fill curve to Engon and that will solve that problem. You'll also notice that this doesn't actually have a bottom at the moment. We can solve that really easily by just adding in a join geometry just there to join our original filled curve there to our raised up part. And then we want to shrink this in basically to scale it in. So we can just use a scale elements node and that's gonna come in here to our extrude mesh, this bit at the top. So scale elements there and we can then scale this as much as we want, except for it's now scaling everything. We only want this to do this to the top and we've got what we wanted. Great, so all sorted, really easy, except for here's where the problem comes in. Uh, let's put that to 0 0.8 just for now. And that problem is this. I want to be able to change the size of this. So I want to have a group input here that's going to be my width and my height, which means that over on this side, I can come to my modifier and I can change the width and the height. But if I come into my width, which is there, you'll notice as I make this move, the angle changes. We get a more shallow angle here. I'm gonna be honest, I've edited the crap out of that because I said shallow angle about five times and my tongue just couldn't deal with it. So if that sounded a little bit weird or it jumped, that's why. But either way, it affects the angle because we're scaling by an amount, or I should say almost a percentage. This is scaling in to 0 0.8 of one, effectively 80%. Now bear that in mind, this is a percentage effectively. 0 0.8 is 80%. And that's what's causing this issue in that all scaling is done by a percentage. And we don't want it to be a percentage. I want to be able to say that I want this inset to be, I don't know, two millimeters in or one millimeter in, not a scaled amount. So how are we going to solve that? 
Well, what we're going to need Blender to do is actually look at this and decide what the scale is going to be. We don't want to set this as 0.8. We need to get Blender to calculate this for us. And we can actually do that with some relatively simple secondary school maths to effectively get this percentage calculated for us. Now, there is a limit to this. Firstly, if our width and height are going to be different, then this isn't going to work perfectly for both at the same time. We're going to have to do this separately. So for the scale elements, I'm going to change that from uniform to single axis. And then I'm going to say I want this to work on the x-axis. Effectively, this is x, y, and z. And if I'm looking, let's say, at the x-axis here is width. So let's deal with the x-axis first. So that's that one there. So we've got to have this one as one. Then we need to be able to input what this inset is going to be. I need to say what I want this distance there to be. And I'm going to do that by coming to group and I want to add a new input. And that input is going to be, I don't know, inset distance. And I'm going to set that to have a minimum of zero because otherwise it goes the wrong way. I guess I could have it not have a minimum of zero so you can have it swing to the other side. But for my vent, I want it as zero. Now, annoyingly, you can't actually set a maximum. Well, you can set a maximum for this. I'd love to be able to set a maximum so it can only fold in up to halfway. That'd be really cool if you could put a formula in here that links to this. But I don't think you can. Please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. I'd love to learn that. That'd be awesome. So we've now got our inset distance over here. And in fact, I'm going to shift and D and bring this whole group input part over here just to make everything easier to see. So what we need to do is calculate what percentage this distance in is. So for example, if I want my inset distance to be one millimeter, so I'll put that in there. So it's sort of hiding in the background. What do I need to do to calculate this? Well, effectively, I just need to work out a percentage. So all we're going to do is do some maths. So I'm going to do a math division there. And I need to divide this by, well, the overall width. So that's going to come in there. And this should give us a value. And if I put that into here for my scale, this is going to go horrible because it's going to be too much. Now, Actually, what's happening here is a problem that actually this is telling us the opposite of what we wanted. I want this to go in one millimeter, but in actual fact, it's doing it one millimeter from the center because, well, if we think about this, we've said, what is, let's just put that to five. So we've asked Blender to calculate what one is as a percentage of five. So this equals 0.2. We don't want that to be 0.2. I keep saying percentage. Obviously, this isn't percentage. We haven't multiplied by 100, but that's how this works. OK, it simplifies everything. So we do this compared to 1 instead of compared to 100. Effectively, it means a percentage. Hopefully, that's perfectly acceptable to people. I will keep saying percentage because it's the way my brain works. If not, go somewhere else. At the moment, this width there is, well, 20% of our total. We don't want it to be 20%. We want it to be 80%. So effectively, I need to get 0.8. And to get that, all we're going to need to do is minus this number from 1. So let's shift an A, and I'm going to bring another math node there. We want to change that to a subtraction. So we're going to subtract this value here from 1, and that's going to give us our amount. Put that in the scale there. Oh, no, sorry, that's completely wrong. We want to subtract this from 1, not 1 from it. There we go. And now we've got that 80% in. And what we can do now is anything we change, for example, this insert here, we're going to have that amount going in. Except at the moment, this isn't actually going in by, let's say, 1. It's going in by half. If I put this to 5 again, we can see that this has gone in a half each time. That's because, well, this is working out a total. So that plus that is going in by a total of 1 millimeter. We don't want that. We want each one to go in a millimeter individually. So all we need to do is take our inset distance and multiply it by 2. So let's just shift and D there change that into a multiply and then by two. So now that is actually going in one millimeter on each side, which does look a bit much. So let's put 0 0.5. That did look better. But either way, we can control this now. And when this gets really wide, so somewhere, for example, there, we can change that to one or whatever we want it to be. So this effectively is going to be our scale node, but it's going to effectively create a scale, but only on one axis. So what we can do now is select that, Control and G to group those together, and we've got our potential options that we want. Um, now, I will say that this for our group inputs, if I then tab out of this, you'll notice that it's got width and inset distance. Actually, that's probably okay. And if I come here and press F2, we can change the label of this. So let's call this scale by fixed amount, and we've got that there. 
And that's useful because now bear in mind that this is only working on one axis, it's not working on the Y axis. So if we come here and then use our height to change this, this isn't actually doing it because we're only doing it on one axis at this point. So what I can do is just shift and D that, change that so we're gonna scale it instead of on the X axis. So zero, we'll change it to the Y axis. So that becomes one. And then we can just do exactly the same thing, shift and D that out, except for this time, we want the inset distance and the height. And then we can put that into the value there. And then that's going to do the same, except for we need to do it again only by the top. So now everything will be scaled perfectly in by a millimeter in all angles on the X and the Y. So we can fix that really quite easily. I'm gonna put that one there and that one there. And yeah, now it just works. Hopefully that's been useful. I'm just gonna tab into that just so you've got the things to use for that. And if you're anything like me and you want to do these models where you can create one thing that you can use multiple times, effectively to make an asset, but an asset you can change really quickly, then hopefully this is gonna be useful to you. If you've enjoyed that video, do please hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. And if you do want that vent, or you just want to support the channel, do head over to the Patreon. It's really appreciated, and it does really help keep everything running. Have a great day, guys.